All right, let's take a look at how to test for high resistance in a circuit. This is very similar to the same techniques that we use to test for an open in the circuit. So if you haven't seen that video, please check that out because it'll also kind of explain a little bit more of what we're doing. But again, back to our very basic setup, we can see our battery with the positive and negative posts, the complete headlight uh, assembly, which has the lens and also the bulb with it and the connector, which I showed in the other video. And then we can see this very short positive and negative circuits, which allows us to see the complete power and ground side of our headlight connector. Again, we don't have any fuses, switches, relays. There's nothing in the circuit. It's very basic and simple, just to help you understand the concept of testing for resistance in a circuit. I'm gonna connect the positive side of the headlight first. And again, not the best way to do it. We're definitely getting some intermittent connections here just because it's not really meant for that, but uh, it'll work for this demonstration. As soon as I connect the negative side, we'll see that the headlight comes on. So we can see that our headlight is working. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce high resistance into this circuit. So I'm going to untwist my negative side Right here is a 10,000 ohm resistor. So I'm gonna insert that in series here. So what this resistor is simulating is that you have maybe some of the strands in your wires have broke, but you still have a few holding it together and perhaps um, the insulation is frayed, as well as uh, we could have corrosion in the, in the lines. We could have um, a loose terminal for an inline connector. You can have maybe somebody that was trying to add a circuit and they damaged the wire. Um, there's a lot of different things that can cause resistance, but we're simulating that by just adding this resistor in series. We can see that the headlight doesn't work at all. I will kind of twist this and, and pull it out so you can see that the headlight doesn't come on at all because of that high resistance. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the headlight connector. We don't need that. And just like with the open in the circuit, even though we know that we have high resistance on the ground side, in a real world situation, all you would know is that the headlight bulb isn't working. And the three things, of course, that can be wrong is the bulb itself can be defective, a problem on the positive side of the circuit, or a problem on the negative side of the circuit. So we're gonna start with Devo, and we're gonna test uh, both sides of the circuit at the same time. I'm gonna use the Devo 22 foot leads and connect those directly to the vehicle's battery. And although we are using a benchtop battery here, we would be connecting this to the battery on the vehicle. And now I'm gonna go ahead and connect Devo. On the left side, it says battery. So I'm gonna connect the other side of my 22 foot leads. Devo powers up. I'm gonna use the Devo forward probes and connect to the front of the connector. These make it really nice and easy to access terminals and circuits without damaging any of the, the wires or damaging the terminals. And now I'm gonna connect the test leads on the circuit side to the forward probes. I'm gonna start with the positive side. And immediately you can see that my positive LED goes green. That tells me that I have a low voltage drop on the positive side. And we can see that we have a zero volt loss. If we wanna see the voltage available, a quick press of the mode button shows that we have 12.54 volts available on the positive side of the circuit. Now I'm gonna connect my negative test lead to the negative side of the circuit. And here I can see that circuit negative LED remained red. That tells me that I have a really high voltage loss on the ground side of my circuit. And we have 12.41 volts on the ground side. Now remember our ground side should have very close to zero volts on it. It's the ground or the negative side, so it shouldn't have any voltage. Because we have 12.40 volts, that means that we don't have a good ground connection. Now the difference in this case where we have high resistance versus where we had a complete open. If you have an open on the circuit, we read full battery voltage on the ground side. So this would have read 12.50 volts in this case. But because we're not reading full battery and we're reading 12.40 volts, that means that we have some ground connection, it's just not a good ground. And that means that we have high resistance in the circuit. You may be asking if we still need to test the resistance in the circuit. And the answer is, we already did. Resistance causes voltage drop. So if you have voltage drop, you have resistance.
Here we have a light bulb that doesn't turn on. We'll remove the light bulb and put Devo in its place, acting as a known good component. We can see the battery voltage is 12.73, but our positive LED is red and we're only getting 1.14 volts to our component. This is because we have high resistance in the circuit. The resistance causes a voltage drop from 12.73 at the battery to 1.14 at the component. For some reason, the automotive field is fixated on finding the exact resistance value in a circuit, as if there's a magical cutoff value between good and bad. Unfortunately, there is no magical number, and that's not how resistance values work. Using Devo, in seconds we can see a red LED and only 1.14 volts on the positive circuit. We know we have a resistance problem, and the exact resistance value doesn't matter. It's that easy, and now you know how to identify resistance problems using Devo.